rest of the story. We know virtually nothing for certain about the Bishop of Myra, except that he served the early Christian church in Southeast Asia Minor during the 4th century. It appears likely that he attended the First Council at Nicaea, which created the landmark Nicaean Creed. Even more likely that he was persecuted along with his Christian brethren by the Emperor Diocletian. Yet regarding the facts of his life, what you've just heard is all that responsible historians dare to surmise. And still, as sometimes happens with local celebrities, the Bishop of Myra became a far and wide success after he died. Became so popular that foreign dignitaries would visit his native land and return home with relics and stories about him. So beloved, in fact, that in 1087, his remains were stolen from their not-so-final resting place in Myra to be majestically enshrined in their own splendid basilica in Bari, Italy. Today, the Bishop of Myra, long since canonized, is the patron saint of three countries and half a dozen cities, is the patron saint of merchants and mariners and bakers and bankers and... and pawnbrokers? That's right. The pawnbrokers of the world have their very own saint. Because once upon a time in the bishop's hometown, there lived a man who had fallen upon hard times. He was so impoverished that he could not afford so much as a modest dowry for even one of his three lovely daughters. And in that place in those times, according to this legend, such a predicament meant only one thing. The man must sell his daughters, either into slavery or into prostitution. His third option, his only remaining one, was to let his entire family starve. Well, guess who learned of all of this? The town bishop, a wealthy man, the bishop... And so it was that one night when the poor man and his family were asleep, the bishop secretly went to their house and tossed a bag of gold inside through an open window and then stole away into the darkness. There was more than enough gold for the eldest daughter's dowry so that now she could be respectably married. Similarly, as each of the two remaining girls reached marrying age, the bishop left bags of gold for them as well. All three daughters were soon married and well on their way to having families of their own. He was discovered by the grateful father on the occasion of that third and final visit, but the bishop asked that his benevolence be kept a secret at least until after his death. For all we know, the legend is based on truth, though to what extent nobody can guess, but in any case, the pawnbrokers of the world believed it, and they eventually adopted the bishop as their patron saint. Perhaps because the story of the three dowries symbolizes in general the redemption of something of value. And do you know that even to this day, you watch now, there are three golden spheres, three gold balls above the pawnbroker's doorway, representing the bishop's three bags of gold. And one thing more, the bishop is also the patron saint of children. And so once each year, new children the world over eagerly await the stealthy midnight visit and the gifts secretly deposited by the generous spirit of the Bishop of Myra, whom, of course, you know by his exalted ecclesiastical name, St. Nicholas. Only, now you know the rest of the story.